Welcome, everybody. We'll be covering NCFF with our great friend, Smatty Matty. How we doing, sir? Hey, I'm doing good. Just surrounded with a bunch of Zeeks here. So I guess it's probably best that we preface. I like NCFF. When it comes to N NCFF, this is the most flashy mod I've ever seen. These yeah. flag, there's also like a ton of item support for this mod as well. So mm -hmm. of it is insane. I know Les would always reference a pair of gloves that would give you 45% class B to the resist reduction of Pierce. Wow. So yeah, things like that. Maybe at some point we will um, put out a video of just itemization. Yeah. Now let's just go in chronological order. Um, okay, cool, cool. You've got a, a Cenobite up, right? Yeah, I'm loading it in right now. It's actually the first thing that I ever rolled in a hardcore. When I was going through it, I noticed like a lot of uh, shield support. Oh, yeah. So it's going to be kind of similar to like a Crusader build sure. at the Paladin. Uh, it's got some weapon proc skills. It's yep. going to be retaliation based too. So you've got that option if you want to build a retaliation build. And the cool thing is when you say shield support, like it's it's literally 100% because you have the Citadel that gives you already a ton of shield block, um, chance to block and damage blocked. But then you also have the swift block transmute that can give you 50% shield block chance, but you lose 99% shield damage blocked, which is still pretty insane. That can help you in ways of um, like procs and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Like some procs are like a hundred percent chance on unblock and things like yes. that, or fifty percent chance on block. So like, there's a lot of give and take in this build when it comes to shield support. For sure. Like you see me, these zombies are gonna try and hit me, but they just can't do anything because I just have a hundred percent block chance and I just kill them. It's really nuts. Yeah, and the thing with damage block is it effectively works the same as damage absorption. Yeah. Block. It's like a flat amount that's reduced after everything else has been taken into account, except for damage absorption, which it does have both. So you'll yeah, be in, in sure. really good shape for... Um, the, Practically the invincible. Yeah, like that's, it's really nutty. Another thing that makes this class unique is it has both stun and taunt resist reduction. So I think that's super cool that you can effectively make a stun build only on like, you know, like trash mobs and like probably mm -hmm. like hero mobs, but it's still neat. And if you want to play tank. Yeah, like if you're playing with a friend or something. Yeah, it would make an awesome tank. Man, it has a lot to it. Like it also has like some cooldown reduction to it, which is nice. Some shield recovery time, which is hard to get. It's a solid stat for sure. It also has, it has increases armor absorption by minus 28% on enemies, which is a really weird wording, but it will increase your physical damage by a whole bunch. Also, like, again, ton of support. It can be both a tank or a healer as well. It's got some yeah. support to a party, so that's neat. Yeah, also this caster skills, like you said, are really cool. Yeah, like, let's see some. This is my favorite. I really yeah. want to make a build with this. Yeah, what's it called? Like Sunray? That thing is it, awesome. So you can do a lot with this class. No ranged capabilities, but melee caster for sure. And you can expect to play lightning, fire, physical, mm -hmm. and chaos. Yeah, there's a transmuter to turn something 100% of physical into chaos. Um, for Cenobite, you're just going to get class C 21% yep. to everything. So even if you get it in the in the randomizer challenge, you'll at least have a little bit of support for any type of damage yeah. support there. It's really cool because if you have like a glass cannon build, you can just pop on a Cenobite with a shield and you're no longer glass cannon. <laughs> yeah. We'll put him as caster in melee. Something cool while you're doing that, something cool about the NCFF is that it's actually one of the first ever... Grimdon mods like back in 2016 before Ashes of Malmoth came out it was just it just added the Necromancer before Ashes of Malmoth added that and the guy's been working on it ever since so it's one of the oldest mods out there right now and it shows because there was an incredible amount of work that was put into those effects moving on we have Fang Shi I got the opportunity to play this one for a while I was playing the gimmicky freeze build because it does have some uh, free support on it um they're like a boomerang. They're called Wings of Frost. Yes, I and, have. Uh, yeah, those are really fun because it's kind of like a boomerang in, in a way. Do you boomers. like the transmuter on it? Yeah, I do actually. It's kind of neat. Like here's it without transmuter. Yeah, and my screen is showing it with the transmuter. Yeah, so it just kind of 
whips it's out really and whips, cool. whips, whips, whips back. It's nice. The only problem with it is, though, it's basically useless in confined space. Yeah. Because yeah, they're going ar day. around the enemies and they're not hitting anything. All of these skills are super flashy. Like, one of the things, I'm just going to show a bunch of these things. There's a lot of active skills, and it has some physical or piercing damage caster skills, too. Like, this sword of sword rain thing is really cool. Yeah, I, I specifically like this one here. I'm just going to turn on all the mo modifiers for it. Yeah. Um, because it's it's insane. Like this is it basically makes swords rain from the sky. Wow, oh my god, that's sick. It's so cool and it gives you a uh, cold re resistance reduction on top of that. So so it's also a, a debuff skill. That's cool. Yeah, it's just so cool. What also makes it um unique is it has uh, some uh, slow resistance reduction and also some entrapment resistance re reduction. Um, so you could basically make a slow build because there's plenty of uh, other classes that slow or it cool. could help you with your traps. These are vines, which is thematic, I think. It's very cool. Basically, in this, you're going to get like a lot of elemental, physical pierce and acid damage. Mm -hmm. uh, another skill I like is uh, the dragon's breath. So if you want to do a fire build, then you can breathe fire. It's like a melee caster, yeah. Oh yeah, and then rock spikes is super cool too. I this know, is, I love this, it. This is what I was talking about with um, a physical caster. This is going to be mm -hmm. one of the only physical casters. I think she cool. also has some scepter and dagger fo focus, where some of the skills, like this one that um, gives you some type A resistance reduction, will require a scepter or a, da a dagger, and this is going to be like a primary attack. Um, it has ring of ice. Which I, I like as well because it's it, it's a barrier. It, it works much like the monster lore from the Titan Quest um, range the class, hunt. a hunter class, where it'll taunt the enemies into it. The enemies will attack it and then it, it explodes and then it kills enemies and it's really cool. So if you want to do like a range build, it may be where worth your time to invest in, into that. Uh, some monsters though, you know, are, are immune to taunt, so they're gonna walk right through it. Yeah, unless you have a uh, Cenobite reducing their taunt resist for you. Uh, it has some damage absorption. Talked about the the slow, but but it also has some immobilization as well as freeze. Um, I was gonna say it has like a uh, exclusive ability for like almost every damage type too. It's very true. The end of this tree is all <laughs> different toggled effects for whatever build that you want to play so yeah you know, if you're going for a cold build it's got that but you're going to take a reduction in acid damage and it gives you some other buffs too and some conversions if you want to play an acid build then you're going to take a reduction in fire so it's kind of thematic too like if you're casting out a bunch of vines obviously they would be weak to like fire so that kind of works and, and so on like fires weak to physical and physical to pierce and all the, all mm -hmm. these things so a little bit of give and take and all of these also have uh celestial powers as well yeah so i'll just show them on, on screen I'm piercing on critical attack health on 100 percent chance when hit which is nice uh healing on enemy death five percent chance on attack to do fire fire damage and a circuit breaker to give you 90 percent damage absorption uh, I would rate it only as a caster and a, and a melee build mm -hmm. for elemental, physical, pierce, and acid. Uh, Feng Shi has a lot of um, resistance re reduction, mostly class A of 40, so that will support any type of damage. And it also has type B for fire, cold, poison, and physical, and bleeding as well. But I didn't see too many bleed skills, to be honest. So it's just going to be so supportive. But it's really high. It's 56, like at soft cap. So that's pretty good. It's just solid class for sure. Yep. So that covers that. Let's let's jump into the anchor right. I, uh, I would love to show off my anchor right, but uh, he is dead because I died in hardcore with him to reflect because he just deals a ridiculous amount of damage. I did notice it has a ton of damage bonuses. But yeah, the anchor, I, he has a lot of like weapon proc skills. So there's a lot of melee and he has a lot of mobility. And also one single aura, one buff. Whenever you hit an enemy, you'll have a chance of dealing a 
ton and ton of internal trauma damage and also reduce their physical resist. And internal trauma damage, I believe it bypasses everything, <clears throat> including armor. Yeah. The, the only thing that will reduce internal trauma is physical resistance. Yeah, it's nuts. Absolutely. Um, I noticed that it has a lot of support for sword, mace, dagger, and scepter. It has yeah. a neat little skill called swap where you can yep. swap places with the enemy so that may kind of come in handy for like a caster if you just need to get the fuck out of there like if, you, if you're trapped yeah for sure and he he has a little bit of caster support like the bottom skill uh is a caster skill that's really strong it can pierce through enemies and convert to aether so there is that as well nice um has insane main hand da damage but it has I think a it's ton kind of fly let me see Oh yeah, that's another. Yes, that one's really good too. Yeah, this is the one with main hand damage of 326. At yeah, that's soft a, cap. No, I think this one was it. Shadow. That's the one kick. I was thinking of. Yeah, yes, that one has a lot one, of damage. This one is totally insane. I've as over 620 to main hand damage. Well, it's got a 3.5 set. So I can't recharge on it, but you could get that way down with some. Yeah, numbers. there are ways, especially there's some items with NCFF that let you like reset cooldowns on kills. Yeah. it's not. Let's see, what, what else do I have here? Uh, so there's a ton of good bonuses at the cost of your movement speed. So that's kind of neat, I think. I tried playing with that, I hated it. Well, this is what I'm thinking with it, because it's it's a toggle, right? So like, yep. you toggle this on when you get into the fight, mm -hmm. and then you toggle it off when you're out of the fight, or you have like a really good charge skill that's like spammable, right? Yeah. And then you focus on that. Because Definitely. Like, uh, Zenith has um, warp as a, te a teleport, and you can just and it's spammable, and you can mm -hmm. just you could fuck shit up with them. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely potential for that kind of build. Just yeah, it's a bit tedious when you're doing it the other way, turning it off and on yourself yeah. over and over. And it breaks away from the meta of, of things, which I definitely yeah. appreciate because may, making the same builds over and over can get for sure. Redundant. It also has a, a, a weapon proc skill. Um, this is going to be it's primarily melee, maybe a little bit of a cat caster, mm -hmm. uh, and it's going to focus on elemental, physical, aether, and chaos. And another thing to know, when you pair it up with uh, mercenary, you can get the by far highest physical resist reduction in the game, in this mod pack, like by far. So uh, it has basically 37 type A flat with an additional class C of 37 to uh, elemental. And it has an additional 20 type C for physical. So yeah, you could get really high over 100 easily with uh, Merc. Um, so Ranger, we have up yep. next. Yeah, I like the Ranger a lot. Basically all about auto attacking with your ranged weapons. You can go one-handed ranged or two-handed ranged. There's different transmuters for both of those. But the two-handed range will be like kind of a sniper build because you can sacrifice your attack speed for a ton and ton of damage. Oh, really? Yeah, precision here, minus 35% attack speed, but look at the amount of flat damage and crit damage, offensive, it's so great. Is there a skill that's pretty insane uh, as a defensive ability buff? There's kind of two that are insane. There's Windrunner that makes you, it's on a 21 second cooldown right now. It makes you Im basically immune for four seconds with a hundred percent chance to avoid melee and all that. Oh, also yeah. gets you a ton of movement speed and attack speed. Just doesn't last very long. Okay, that's fair enough. Um, I have on here, yeah, it's gonna be like your standard weapon attacks has like a default wet weapon attack replacer. Yep. So some wet weapon pull skills, a ton of uh, racial bonuses. Um, yeah, you have three passives that just increase your damage to basically every race you can think of in the game as well as just give you really good stats on top of that yeah and and like i said those apply like after everything else has been accounted for so those are super helpful and, and it kind of makes sense because ranger kind of makes me think of like a hunter and they would know yeah. like all of the like animals weaknesses and stuff like that yeah so that's pretty neat know exactly where to aim on these like chaos abominations and all that yeah, exactly uh, Something I find really cool, you said the auto attack replacer marksmanship, mm -hmm. it's passive, mark of the slayer, once you kill an enemy, any enemy, they'll drop this red thing and you stand on it and your damage gets increased by a ton and you get a bunch of offensive and attack speed. Oh really? I think that's a really cool skill, yeah. You're that's, kind of just standing awesome. on, 
Um, and then, like we were discussing before, Ranger has a flat 9 second cooldown reduction yep. as well. On top of that, 20% reduction but as well. That does require a shield, so you can't do two-handed with that. It also has a, a, a Falcon, which yep. uh, gives you some resistance reductions for fire, yeah. fire some bleed. And it scaled up your damage too, which is really nice. And there's like support for almost every damage type. Almost every skill has at least one transmuter that will convert the damage to something. Like you have Aether, Vitality, Chaos, Elemental, you have everything in here. Mainly Pierce and Physical though. Yeah, I was gonna say like it looks like it has good support for Pierce and Bleeding, a little bit of Fire. But yeah, it has Type A of 29 um, to everything and then yeah some good support for bleed and pierce of course because it's, it's gonna be primarily a ranger but uh, a ranged build yeah it's just all auto attacks the only real like aoe skill it has this kind of oh shit knock everything away from me skill this one on my screen it's arcane barrage other than that all of your aoe is coming in like multiple projectiles on your auto attack replacer and some chance of piercing projectiles it's just all auto attacks basically all right well that covers that one so there's only two more class overview videos for this series make sure you guys go check out smatty maddie's channel where he also does grim dawn stuff coming up we'll be covering the diablo 2 classes as well as all the necromancers i have some other ideas for videos on the back burner as well such as overviews of itemization crafting item management as well as some ideas that are more or less philosophical perspectives on modding and of course covering any mod and Grim Dawn update news so make sure you subscribe if that's something that you're looking forward to. Some of you may also know I started a review series for Amazon's The Boys if that's something that you're interested in there will be a link in the description for that. So I hope you guys check that out i've been spending countless hours and sleepless nights editing and animating so i hope you guys get some enjoyment out of that until then stay excellent